Could I have cut them to the right length in the first place? Sure. It sounds like there's like a cat howling downstairs. I don't have a cat. I'm not going down there to figure out what is up with that. Hey guys, it's Marianne. I don't know if you know this about me, but I love art. In fact, if you guys watched my home tour at my old house, you probably noticed I am obsessed with art. But here's the thing I don't love about art. Now don't get me wrong, I'm actually friends with some professional framers and I know that their work is worth every penny, but framing art is so expensive. And while I have some pieces that definitely need, you know, the archival mat and the non-glare UV protectant glass. Some of my art, it's just like a movie poster that I love. You know, and I love this. I think it's worthy of being displayed, but I decided to come up with an inexpensive way to hang and display art today. Okay, maybe I didn't come up with it. In fact, there are a million versions of this tutorial out there on the internet, but guys, I figured out a way to do it for like under $5. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to use materials you can find at the hardware store to make a really simple but beautiful art hanger. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to measure some half inch round trim. This is just regular old pine trim from the hardware store. You can get an eight foot length of this for just a couple of dollars and you don't even need the whole thing. But you can buy that whole length of trim and make several of these art hangers. I mean, it, I wasn't kidding when I said this was a really cheap project. I am using this adorable Steel Magnolias movie poster, one of my favorite movies of all time. It's got that classic armadillo red velvet cake on the front. Gotta love it. Okay, so we want our picture hanger to be about an inch wider than our art. This poster is exactly 12 inches wide. So we're gonna add an inch on each side and make two 14 inch cuts of our trim. I'm gonna mark our second piece also at 14 inches. Set the art aside where it's not gonna get banged up or anything. And now we are going to grab a handsaw. This is a great tool to have in your craft toolbox. There are just projects where it's not worth it to haul out, you know, a power tool or a lot of people don't have them or don't have the space for them. These hand saws are sharp and effective, don't take up a lot of space. Now I am going to put a work glove on the hand that's going to hold the trim while I saw because we're cutting such a small piece of wood. I just grabbed a piece of sacrificial wood from our wood shop and that's just so we have something to rest this against and also it protects our surface. You really want to let the saw do the work for you. Slow even strokes will cut it honestly easier than if you really like lean into it. Cut number one done. Now we're just going to flip around and cut our second piece. All right, we're gonna grab a sanding block or just some sanding paper and smooth over any of those rough edges. All right, now that our wood is cut, it's time to cut out our magnets. You can buy sheets of magnetic material at the craft store, but this is an amazing hack that I have discovered. You can get these magnetic vent covers and you get three of them in this pack for just a few dollars. We're gonna cut four strips that are just a little bit skinnier than our pieces of wood trim. This trim is just over half an inch wide, so we're gonna cut four half inch wide strips of magnet. Now I like to use the wood trim as a guide. You know, just like if you were cutting, you know, acrylic or something, we're gonna go slow. It's gonna get the most even results. So now that we've got those four magnetic strips cut out, 
And just like our artwork, we want these magnetic strips to be 12 inches long. So I'm just gonna trim off a little bit. The other thing I love about these event covers is they are coated on one side. It makes it so these stick great to the wood just using hot glue. And you know, if you don't have a glue gun, a little super glue, a little E6000, that'll do you right. Don't put away your glue gun just yet because we're going to add some cord to hang it. Now, I think this would look really cool with some leather. Um, you could even use ribbon. I don't have any leather, but I did get some of this cotton cord from the hardware store. I'm just gonna measure out the length of it like this. Get a snip. And I just want it to look really clean and simple on the front. I think I'll just glue it like that. All right, make sure you don't cover up your magnet because that's the length of your art. So you're gonna need that room, right? Good blob, hot glue. And yes, I think blob is the correct unit of measurement for hot glue. Another blob. And just to keep this from fraying, I'm gonna put a blob of hot glue on top of that and grab some of our scrap wood and kind of smooth it down. There we go. Now we'll just repeat over here. Now, I mean, it's kind of moment of truth time, guys. We grab our artwork, place it at the top, and because we were so careful with measuring, it fits perfectly. Slap that magnet on top, make sure you use the right side. Slide this down to the bottom. Add the magnet down there, and boom! Guys, how cute is that? It seriously cost me less than $5 to make, and I have to say, I'm really feeling it. I think these would be so cute in a grouping with like a few different sizes. You could stain the wood, you could paint it, you could change up the cord, and to be quite honest, I think I'm gonna make more. I mean, I've got more of this trim left. I have more of all the materials, and I certainly have a stack of art downstairs that's just waiting to be framed. But I wanna hear from you guys. Do you love art? Do you also run into the framing predicament? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I think it's time to go hang this up. I'll see you guys next time.